Season 51, War number 10, and we are up against Nefty. This time my team will be Vox, Kate Bishop, and Onslaught. I will be taking Path 6 in Section 1, Path 6 in Section 2, and then I will be taking a Photon, Green Goblin, Longshot, Iron Man Infinity War, as well as an America Chavez mini boss, and that will be it for this war. I believe we used Blade for the leader boss there. My team wasn't as well equipped for that one. Now, starting off here, we have a Guardian on the Combat Issue Prowess and Spiked Armor Nodes, and I will be taking the fight with Vox. Essentially, the only real issue with this fight is the defense tactic, and as you are probably already know, Vox does shut down the defense tactic extremely well. With the amount of buffs he gains simply from his basic attacks, he can gain those clarity passives up insanely quickly and also keep them up throughout the whole fight without much trouble. Game plan here is to just get close to a special 2, ramp up as many buffs as possible, and then just drop the special one there to turn the corrupted buffs into degenerations and then watch the defender melt. A single rotation and it's more than enough damage to finish off the fight in less than 40 seconds. And I gotta say, using Vox's degenerations is always so satisfying and I love using him. And then we have a Sauron uh, on the critical setup and aggression prowess nodes and I am taking the fight with Vox as well. This one is basically a nodeless Sauron and there's nothing really for me to worry about. You can do this fight with most champions using basics and specials, it doesn't make a difference. The game gives you guaranteed critical hits on your combo enders here, so that's some extra damage for you to use, and other than that, just a Sauron with a little bit of extra prowess here and there, which honestly is not an issue. So I went with the special one for the legions here, and once again, a single rotation, and it is more than enough damage to deal with the fight. Now, Vox may not, may not be the nukiest champion for general use, but as a rank 3, he does have the damage to do some quite nasty fights, and I'm sure these fights so far haven't exactly been too impressive, but still, it's nothing to sneeze at, I guess. And then we have a Dark Hawk here on the prowess buildup unblockable and superior specials node, and I will be taking the fight with Vox as well. Now Dark Hawk is a tactic defender, so to start off the fight I gotta play a bit more careful and only hit the defender where they are stunned. But as soon as I get the first clarity up, I'm free to do whatever I want. Now the game plan here is to only push Dark Hawk to his special 2s. The main reason for that is the block damage from the special 1 combined with the 200% prowess passive from the nodes. The chip damage would be annoying to deal with, so the special 2 is the easier one to deal with. To punish the special first of there, I end up just going for a parry and a heavy attack to knock him down, switch the modes to the auto block phase, which I can completely bypass with the clarity charge, and then build up power to special 2. The special 2 gives you a vigilance, which then turns to a corrupted vigilance, allowing you to bypass miss essentially permanently, so now I can punish the special 2 without any risk of missing. With that said though, the fight is already over in less than a minute and the Legions barely even had a chance to start ramping up and, well, Vox just has a ton of utility in his kit to deal with fights like that. Then we have a Bullseye on the Prowess buildup unblockable and passively special nodes and I wasn't too excited about taking this one. Now, the issue here is that every single special hit that you block will give the defender a dormant prowess and those activate when they then throw their special attacks moving forward and if they have three prowesses their specials will be unblockable as well and since I'm not confident I can full dex the special ones him using them here would be very very annoying and I'd rather avoid it so I'm trying my best pushing the special to use here instead if I can just do that well, there it goes, first special one, and now he has enough prowess to go unblockable. 
And that means I am kind of screwed if he throws another special one. So I'm doing my best here to try to re-parry so that I can get an opening, but he wasn't letting me do that, just spamming heavies instead. There I tried to trigger the evade into a striker, but I threw the striker too early and ended up, ended up having it blocked. So overall, I didn't play that too well there, and at any point he could have just decided to throw the special one and ruin my day, but he didn't. So that was awfully nice of him, and now that I'm at my special two, the fight is done. With all the damage from the Daunted's increasing it as well, special damage plus the degeneration from the Neuroshocks I had put on, and yeah, once Onslaught gets going, he really gets going. But yeah, that's that's not really a fight that I would be comfortable taking all the time. Depends on the AI way too much in my opinion. And then we have a another photon on the event flow knockdown and right back added miniboss node along with aggression prowess, and I will be taking this fight with Kate Bishop. Now, as I have said previously, Kate Bishop isn't exactly the greatest counter to Photon, but you don't need a counter to her. So long as you just manage her pure light form properly, you can take the fight with anyone, provided they have the damage to actually do the fight in 5 minutes, despite having your damage reduced by the opponent's inequity mastery, which, let's be real here, everyone runs in tier 1 wars. So the game plan is to just get those special 1 cold snaps on with the event for fury to increase its damage and now with the both of them up I just gotta keep them up by either hitting the opponent's block, punishing heavy attacks or specials or just resetting them with knockdowns against the wall there. And at this point the fight is essentially over, I just go for the forced pure light form trigger there by doing the light whiff trick and now that that is on I try not to push her to a special one just slow play it dance around for a bit then a heavy knockdown there to remove the protection and let the cold snaps finish her off before she can get back up that was one of the better Kate Bishop against photon fights I have done they have gone wrong in the past but this one was very clean and no complaints there then next up we have a fight that I was slightly worried about since I hadn't seen the matchup before and I wasn't exactly sure how he would interact with the nodes but it is a green goblin on the high energy diet and burden of mind minimal node and I will be taking this fight with Vox. Now to start off with I do have an advanced power boost which is not really necessary but it is extremely help for helpful for this fight. Now Vox is immune to power drain, so the Burden of Might node can't remove your power, however it will still reduce your combat power rate to a crawl, and you can't really gain a special in this fight on your own. So that is why the advanced power boost comes in very handy. Essentially my plan is to build as many buffs as possible, and then you to fight with a single special one DJ rotation, and that would be it. Now the issue with this fight that I wasn't exactly certain about before taking it was how his madness passives would interact with the unblockable from regen node and it works exactly the way I didn't want it to. Essentially if he has as many of the orange passives as he does the green ones or more orange than the green then every single hit that you land on green goblin will uh, allow him to regen some of the damage taken and that essentially means that every single hit you land while he has the orange or equal or more than the green ones then that counts as a separate region passive for the node and he would be able to go unblockable very often if you just keep hitting the opponent. I'm sure I explained that in a very roundabout way but essentially orange up every single hit you deal new region counts for the unblockable causes problems undexable specials, yada yada yada. You get the idea. Anyways, the fight went down with a single rotation. I did manage to deal with the unblockable relatively well and the damage was more than enough to deal with the fight. Then, next up we have a long shot on the Hazard Shift, Shock and Bleed minibus node along with Conflictor and I'm taking this fight with Onslaught. Now Onslaught is almost a perfect option for this fight. First off, he doesn't take any damage from bleed or shock, so the hazard shift node doesn't do anything. On top of that, he doesn't take any damage from the incinerates from long shot special 2, so him getting to that special 2 is not an issue either. 
only real problem with this fight is that you have no way to control the opponent's power. And that means if you get a couple unlucky nullifies on your, on your dexterity, there is a very strong possibility of long shot getting to special 3. And Onslaught has nothing against the stun that happens from long shot special 3, um, which then basically means you're gonna get comboed afterwards, and it will hurt. Regardless though, I'm just being very, very careful baiting his specials whenever possible, and then just climbing up that special to I get the full Rosho cramp up from the shock debuffs from the hash hash shift node anyways, so I was able to skip the special one straight into the special two, and that was enough to close out the fight. Sorry I can't speak well today, it is pretty late and I'm recording this wars back to back, and I'm stumbling on my words, but bear with me, I'm sure it's nothing new. Then we have an Iron Man Infinity War on the Aspect of Evolution miniboss node, and I'm taking the fight with Vox. Once again, Tactic Defender, so start off slow, get the first clarity up, and then go ham. And that's about all there is to it. Now, usually against Iron Man Infinity War, there are a couple ways you can do the fight. Generally, I like going for the special 3 nuke strat, because that way you can avoid the power gain phase completely. But you can also go for the degenerations as usual, and as long as you have either the Undermine or the Clarity Up, the Oral Block will never be an issue. On this specific note, however, due to the increased ability power rate, the Special 3 route is the way to go, because the power gain on Iron Man's 15% health phase is very, very potent, so generally that is something to avoid. But because I'm an idiot, I decided to go for the Degen route instead. But that also can be used properly by simply not hitting him at all when he triggers the power gain phase and just allowing the Degens to take him past it, finishing the fight. So that's not the safest way to do it, but it works and, well, it is faster as well. Which is partly why I went for that route. The main reason is because I think it's satisfying watching the Degens, but. Yeah, probably not the best idea to do that in war, but... Well, no one can stop me, so I'm doing it. Then we have the final fight of the war, an America Chavez on the uh, Conflictor Minibus node along with Combat Azure Prowess, and I'm taking this fight with Kate Bishop. Fight is simple enough, get the cold snaps up, they are passives and not debuffs, so Conflictor node will not work against them and then just punish her special one over and over again to pause the cold snaps and repeat that until the fight is done. So long as America Chavez doesn't become annoying with her AI and start spamming random heavies, there's nothing at all to worry about in this fight. Just keep baiting the special one and that's easy enough. I will take this fight in roughly 40 seconds, a little bit less than that, no damage taken, and that will be it for this war. As for the results, we did end up winning the war 2-0. to zero. We landed a donut here against Nefty, which is very nice to see.